Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's ob almost about time, so let's get started. So in this session, we are going to be talking about rolling upgrades. So we will be briefly go through what is a rolling upgrade and the current upstream development status in each project. And then we will show our test results of our OpenStack deployment, both in VMs and containers. So my name is Lu Jing. I'm currently working as a software engineer for Fujitsu. And this is my colleague, Hugh. Yeah, I'm a software engineer from Fujitsu, Vietnam. So if you have any questions or suggestions regarding our presentation, you are very much welcome to reach us through either the email or ping us on our IRC channels. So let's get started. Before we go in through our test results, we will briefly explain what is a rolling upgrade. So in the technical community's definition of OpenStack Foundation, when we are trying to do a rolling upgrade, for example, we have a project and we have some services inside this project. And if we can upgrade one of the, pro one of the service inside this project, bring it to the another version, and then if we can do this to all of the services inside this project one by one, we call this a rolling upgrade. And in the thesis definition, we do not strictly require that we do this kind of shutdown and restart one by one. So we do allow some of the services are being shut down together and bring up at the same time. So in this case, if we can have a HA setup of this project, so we, while we are trying to upgrade this project, we can be doing this from one copy to another one. So from the user's perspective, we can try to be minimize the service downtime while we are trying to upgrade this project. So why do we want rolling upgrades? If we do not have rolling upgrades, we have two other options. The first one is we just shut down all the service and bring them up together, and we call this a code upgrade. So in code upgrades case, we will be experiencing a large amount of service downtime, because while we are shutting down and restart all of this stuff, this project has no ability to respond to any API requests. And also, we can build another identical OpenStack cloud which are running in the new release. So we're just migrating all the OpenStack resources from the old release of this OpenStack to a new release of OpenStack. And we call it blue, green, and canary upgrade model. But in this case, we will be suffering from really high hardware cost because we are building an identical OpenStack cloud only for upgrading purposes. And we also want to emphasize that what rolling upgrades are not. So this is from the OpenStack thesis definition. As I briefly mentioned earlier, in rolling upgrades, we do allow some services uh, bring down and bring up together at the same time. So this means we cannot guarantee zero downtime upgrades while we are doing rolling upgrades. And even in the definition of zero downtime upgrades, we cannot guarantee that the users are not affected by this upgrade happening in the backend because our API requests may be experiencing some delay of response. And if we, can, if we want to ensure that the users are not affected by this upgrade, not at all, we call it a zero impact upgrade. So bear in mind that in the OpenStack world, we have three tiers of upgrades, rolling upgrades, zero downtime upgrade, and also zero impact upgrade. So why don't we just have rolling upgrades by nature? I mean, what blocks us from having it? The reason is, while we are doing the rolling upgrade, we will be end up in a case where we have both old codes and new codes running at the same time. And if this happens, while in the OpenStack world, as a distributed system, this communication between, this communication between services inside a project is being done in a RPC in being done in an RPC manner. So while we have new codes running up, how can we guarantee that it can have also working RPC communication with the old codes? And also normally we upgrade the database first, then how can we guarantee that the old codes can still be accessing our new database schema without any problems? So in order to address these two kinds of incompatibilities, 
different projects came up with different functionalities that they want to use to solve these incompatibilities. So for the RPC layer, we may have some RPC versioning so that we can control even new version of RPC codes can communicate with old version of RPC codes. And also if we have any payloads that are transferring between this RPC layer, we can use a old slow version objects to address these payloads. And also for the database side, we definitely need that uh, mechanism that the old, both old codes and new codes can be accessing the database. So for some projects, they are using database triggers to guarantee this access. And also while we are doing the database schema or data migration, we do not want this migration to be affecting our running codes. So we want to have an online kind of matter Online, uh, online manner of schema and data migration. So this is the current upstream project status with respect to the rolling upgrades implementation. As we can see, most of the core projects in OpenStack has already support rolling upgrades feature. And the only left one is neutral and the community is still actively trying to implement and hopefully we can get it in the P cycle. And for other projects like Ironic and Hit, which are also broadly deployed in the public clouds, the community are also working hard to have it. And for some other projects, such as Barbecue and Designate, the community has not had any plans to support it, but we are trying to push it in the upstream. And starts from here, we will be explaining how we're trying to do the test of rolling upgrades in our two deployments. So in our VM deployed OpenStack, we have a very typical three controller nodes running in active-active mode, and then we have three compute nodes, two network nodes, and three storage nodes. And the uh, active-active running controllers are running behind a load balancer and a virtual IP. And in our container deployed OpenStack, the architecture of OpenStack itself are basically the same, but we are using an OpenStack official project called Cola to do the container deployment. So we have two other nodes specifically for Cola's purpose that are provisioning node and Docker private registry node. And with respect to our tests, we are only been testing these five projects, which are Keystone, Glance, Nova, Neutron, and Cinder. And the upgrade order, we followed the recommendation from the OpenStack official upgrade guide. And we are trying to do the upgrade from Newton release to stable Okata release. And then how do we try to imitate that the actual things happen in the production cloud. So we continuously send some asynchronous CRUD API requests. And for some of the create requests, which takes a long time, for example, booting a VM, we create a amount of VMs beforehand only for the deletions purposes. And also, while we are trying to upgrade one of the controllers, running behind a load balancer, and there may be a time that this controller cannot respond to any API requests, which is expected in, during our upgrades case. And in order to avoid that the load balancer continuously send this API request to this controller, we try to drain this upgrading node from the load balancer while it is being upgraded. And after it is fully upgraded, we bring it back to this load balancer. And our estimation of the service downtime. So with, res with respect to the performance, at this moment we are mainly focusing on the API service downtime for now. So we may have a multiple slots of API downtimes. So we record all of the response we received from the API requests we sent to the cluster. And we, comp we just simply add, that, add up all the multiple slots of downtime we are encountering during all this API requests. And the general steps to upgrade each project are basically the same. The very first step is we need to expand the database schema. And then for some projects, if they use database triggered kind of database access, we need to set up the database triggers before we have any running new codes of new release of codes. And then in the control plane, we just do this upgrade one by one in a rolling manner. And for some projects, if we need to contract the database schema, it has to be wait until we have finished the upgrade of the whole controllers first. 
And then if this project has any data plane services, we do this drilling upgrade after we contracted the database schema. And all these steps can be automated through some Ansible tools or bash scripts. And while we are trying to do these drilling upgrades in VMs, it's pretty straightforward. We install the five projects Newton release distro and in beforehand, we prepare the Okata release local repo because we do not want to be downloading all these new codes while we are doing the upgrading. And then we just deploy an Okata release step. Oh, and a special trick here is for the projects that we need to do the database migration, we deployed another Okata release step stack only for the purpose of trying to do the database migration for this OpenStack VM cluster. And then you can just go online for each project. They have a very well documented document showing you how we can do these rolling upgrades in each project. And now I will hand over to my colleague. He will explain us about our container tests. And uh, for rolling upgrade, doing in the container environment. So we come up with a collab project is uh, at the official Big Ten uh, project. And you pack it on the OpenStack service and its dependency into the container image, and then your Ansible uh, Kubernetes to deploy the full stack OpenStack uh, cluster. And uh, while testing the rolling upgrade in the container environment, we, we, we miss some trouble with the Cola Ansible doing rolling upgrade. The, we come with the option. The first option is we use the native Cola Ansible upgrading command. And because the Ansible, we are using Ansible engine, or Ansible serial line engine, and Ansible engine remove on the old container with the same name, and then bring up the new container with the same name. So there could be a little bit downtime, and they are not the same the same way as we do native running upgrade. For example, in Keystone, you need to uh, fencing down the first node and then doing upgrade, like the D, in the DB layer or RPC layer. And then after that, we restart on the service in the first node and do the same step in the next, next node. So uh, with the Collinsible operate command, we cannot do this. So we eliminate this first option. The second option here, we, we try to deploy, for example, we try to deploy the Newton uh, release and then go into each container image and do some command like apt update or apt upgrade. But uh, all the con Cola container images are restricted with the root permission, so we cannot do some kind of this way. And uh, the last option here, we, we try to, dis uh, to, to deploy the Newton release, and then uh, pull the Okata release into the Ignos, and stop manually the Newton release, and start manually the Okata release. So this comes with the true problem. The first thing is, uh, if we manually start the container, so we, we may lost some environment testing or uh, some configuration from uh, the Cola automation tool. And the second thing here is that from Newton to Okata, so Cola uh, deprecated the log container from the hacker to FluentD. So this uh, option also uh, cannot achieve the rolling upgrade in container. So we finally we found some workaround to try to do the rolling upgrade in the container environment. So the first step here is firstly we deploy the Okata release uh, with color, and then we stop and rename the file project Okata release container. For example, we remove, uh, rename the, from the Nova API container to the Nova API uh, Okata container. And then we deploy the Newton release uh, OpenStack with color. Yeah, so the first step here, uh, this is the second step we rename and then the last step, we deploy the Newton release OpenStack with color. This ensures that we, we have the both container versions of OpenStack service running on the same node, and then we can start manually and do not lose the config or environment testing. So uh, the general step for rolling upgrade in each project is for each service in each node, we stop the Newton container, and then we start the Okata container Im immediately. And so we do some special trick to do the database migration is that we deploy another dev stack environment and reconfig the dev stack D, uh, DB to the Cola cluster for ensuring the uh, online data migration or trigger can come up. Uh, there are some notes here for Docker run and Docker start. Firstly, Docker run is a normal container upgrade uh, mechanism. Uh, it can create the union read drive view, my volume set configuration, and start the container. 
uh, while Docker start only start the container. So the first the, f the first three steps of the Docker run is very fast compared with the container start time. So you can eliminate the, uh, evaluating the three steps while the Docker start only depend on the specific service running in container. So we we start the OpenStack service in Docker and then we, we need to wait for the service to come up. So here my colleagues will come some results from the running upgrade in Trubo environment. Okay, so this is our test results with respect to the API service downtime in each project. So as you can see for projects such as Keystone, Glance, Cinder and Neutron, we can almost reach zero downtime upgrades. But in Keystone's case, while we did like dozens of times of tests, but we still occasionally encounter some DB deadlock questions DB deadlock failures. So we cannot guarantee like zero downtime upgrades. We still have one or two of the fa API failures. And with respect to Cinder's case, because currently Cinder volume are still has to be running in active passive HA mode. So while we are trying to bring up the passive node and sh shut down the active node, there might be a slight window that the API, the Cinder volume cannot answer to the API requests. So we met some failures in the container's case while we are trying to upgrade the Cinder. So some explanation of why we encountered so much downtime in Nova is that for now the Nova rolling upgrades will still require a full shutdown and restart of controller plane in Nova. So now for example we are running an old release, maybe end release of Nova and while trying to upgrade it we need to bring down all the controller plane service, upgrade the database, reconfigure the configuration files and then bring up the new releases. But the good news is while we are doing this in the controller plane, the running Nova instances are not affected by this procedure. So at the moment where we are trying to upgrade the controller plane, we are only restricted from launching new instances or resizing or deleting the existing Nova instances. And the rolling upgrades in Nova only happens while we are trying to upgrade the Nova compute. So for these running compute nodes, if you are trying to upgrade them to the new release, you can just live migrate the running instances on one of the compute nodes to another one, and you do the upgrade of this Nova compute. So the rolling upgrade here is the, remember the RPC incompatibilities we mentioned earlier? So this RPC incompatibilities happens between the new version of controller plane and the old version of the compute nodes. And also because we are doing the live migration between Nova compute nodes, this RPC in, RPC compatibility open also happens between the old Nova compute nodes and new Nova compute nodes. And for neutron server's case, since Okata release, we can have multiple version of neutron server running at the same time. But actually, the development of Oslo version object hasn't been finished yet. The community is still trying very hard to get it done in, pi in P cycle. And the reason we can support this from the O cycle is that we banned all the contract scripts so that Previously, all the no neutron server downtime happens while we are trying to do the contract database migration. And now since all these kind of contract scripts are banned from the upstream, we will be no longer encountering any contract cost neutron server downtime. And also, as I briefly mentioned earlier, Cinder volume now only supports active passive HA mode, although the community is working hard to get us to the really active, active HA mode, but we are not there yet. So we have some options we can do to try to minimize the downtime while we are bringing up the passive node and shutting down the active node. The first one is we can configure both active and passive Cinder volume to be listening to the same queue. So that while we shut down the active one, the pa passive one, once it is ready, it can read from the same queue just seamlessly. Or we can increase the timeouts between Cinder API and Cinder volume. So while we're doing the upgrade of Cinder volume in the back end, the Cinder API will hold all the API requests until it hits the API timeouts. And if we can finish the Cinder upgrade before the API hits the timeouts, we will not see any API failures either. And 
So the downtime difference between the VM deployed containers, uh, VM deployed OpenStack and container deployed OpenStack is that in the VM's case, we need to upgrade and unpack all the packages and then restart the services while we are upgrading one project. While in container's case, the only time we need to wait is just the restart time of each services. And normally people believe that the restart time of containers has already been much quicker than the VM's restart time. So it's reasonable that we are gaining some less service downtime if we deployed our OpenStack in container environment. And also for these four projects, even though we did not see any failed we didn't see that much field of API requests, but it is reasonable to assume that if you are in an intense environment, because we are bringing down one of the co one copies of these running services, so it is now we only have two thirds of the services answering to the API requests. So we, if you are in an intense environment, it is reasonable to expect that your API requests will be experiencing some delay of response. So some conclusions here are that for these four projects, now we can upgrade them with almost zero downtime, and which is a good news. And for the Nova's case, if you are deploying them in the containers, you can expect less service downtime compared to VMs. So some remaining tasks that we want to achieve in rolling upgrades is we definitely need, want to see rolling upgrades feature in all the projects that we want to use. So now we are actively pushing the community to implement them in Barbican and Designate. And in the future, maybe we will turn to Trove and Melina or Sahala. And also, because we want to use Cola to deploy our container environments, so we would like to see Cola can support the native rolling upgrades which have already been provided by these projects. So we have some ongoing blueprints we are taking care of, and once they are fully merged, we can just use the Cola Ansible upgrade to do the rolling upgrades in containers. And some future work is Rolling upgrades are cool, but for sure we would like to see totally zero downtime upgrades. And in order to do this, we have two options. The first one is just like the rolling upgrades case, we just implement this feature in each project. And this can just directly give us rolling upgrades no matter what your deployment is. And the secondly is while we are trying to do the zero downtime in containers. We have another session explained our current approach, which can give us a zero downtime OpenStack cluster upgrade. And the room is just next to this one and right after this session. So if you are interested in, you are very welcome to join us. And also zero downtime gave us some delayed response of API requests. So we would also like to say that how can we just have no impact to our users while we are doing the upgrade in the backend. So this would be our second future work. And also for all these three different kinds of upgrades we are discussing here, they are all talking about adjacent release upgrades, which means if you want to have a P, P release of OpenStack, you have to be at least in O cycle first. You cannot jump from N cycle to P cycle directly. But this can be painful for some public cloud providers because they have to do all this bunch of upgrades case every six months. So if possible, we would also like to see this skip release upgrades. But this can be painful because due to the current deprecation rules in the OpenStack community, most features are deprecated only within two cycles. So if we want to have skip release upgrade, we need to address that issue first. And we made our upgrade scripts and our testbed information public. So if you are interested in follow our procedure of testing rolling upgrades in these two deployments, you are welcome to pull this Git, GitHub repo. And we also would like to thank the communities for helping us while we are trying to do these upgrades. And if you have any questions, I think they will be very happy to answer your questions on IRC. And also a special thanks to our colleagues who help us a lot while we are trying to implement these tests. Okay, so now we are ready to take some questions. Hopefully we can answer your questions. So if anyone has a question, okay, like that gentleman over there. Thank you for uh, sharing with this uh, uh, very you know, useful uh, direction uh, we needed. Years, everyone needed to this kind of seamless upgrade. But um, in my mind, 
practically um, first thing we would like to make sure for upgrading is that even with non-zero downtime, let's say, okay, you know, I'm not even expecting you know, zero downtime, non-zero, even one day, even a week. After really upgrading and it's really working as before, that's the kind of a first goal. But even that goal has not been easy. Yeah. Because mainly, even next release, they change the configuration parameters. Yes. Right? So how did you deal with that uh, when there's a significant number of configuration parameters they applicated or newly introduced? And not only upgrading source code itself, you have to find the matching uh, configuration file per project, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, how do you do that? So in our tests, we so before we upgrade it to the new codes, we prepare the next release configuration file in place. And then after the upgrade to the new codes, it can use the new configuration file. But yeah, I understand your concerns. So eventually, we will need to restart the new version of codes in order to bring those conf new configurations really into practical use. Yeah, so eventually, we still need to restart the new codes even though we have upgraded them. So are you planning to, with the new, new release all the time, you, you can, if you can provide, right? Every project can provide, okay, see here, if you have this kind of parameter, then because of the new change, you have to use some different way, then yeah. people can follow, right? Yeah, so yeah. Be before you upgrade that, that part of the codes, you need to bring the new configuration files in place first. So there are no way to, to manage the, the new train of the configuration. And this submit, uh, there are two sessions about uh, how we can implement the configuration management in an open stack project. And uh, there are some tries with the ETCD version 3. But uh, there are no final consensus. So open stack for recommending recommending us to upgrade it in only from the X version to the X plus 1, not skip really the upgrade because of the deprecation or remove configuration. Yeah, please. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you very much for what you're doing here. This is huge. Um, from a, a new uh, comer to this space, um, you know, our fear has always been if we start up something like this and we can't do the zero time, I mean zero downtime upgrade, uh, that just things that are just, you know, prevent us from just even coming to this space. So uh, seeing this, uh, what you're doing here is it, it, really it's outstanding. Um, I just also have a question too. Uh, obviously, looking at from the VM perspective and from the container perspective, you're saying that um, with the container, there's less downtime. So if someone's new like myself, starting out uh, on this path, would you recommend going the container path versus the VM just for that purpose? Well, I think if you are deciding on like which deployment you want, you cannot only see it from rolling upgrades case because this is only one of the factors that will influence your decision. You also need to see like what kind of workloads you will be running in your OpenStack cloud and maybe in your case, the container may not be a suitable choice for you, but with only respect of the rolling upgrades perspective, so we think we would prefer containers. But that's only for rolling upgrades case. Absolutely, that's what I'm trying to uh, figure out just because with that point, if you're new to the space, you're not gonna get fancy right away. So yeah. thank you. No problem. So if no one has any questions, we can close here. Oh, sorry, <coughs> I've got one more. Good morning. So, thank you for sharing this uh, interesting materials. So I'm just wondering about uh, one more uh, case. So you talked about uh, rolling up uh, updates and uh, maybe you have some experience with rolling back updates if something goes wrong. Yes, so this is really, how can I address it, painful or 
So, I mean, like you're asking if we made some problems while we're doing the rolling upgrades, how can we roll back to the previous version? So, um, with the perspective of database, the OpenStack community has banned the downgrade of database. So, if you want to bring back the old, the old database, you need to have a backup of the database. And if something bad happens, you can restore that database part. But for the code part, we don't have a reasonable or now satisfying approach to do the rollback of this kind of downgradation. So this is also something we need to address in the future. But for now, we don't have a satisfying solution for that. Sorry. Thank you. No problem. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thank you.